Could you tell me how his physical condition appeared to you at this point? Well, it was fairly dark, but I could see that he was doubled over and was propping himself up against one of the cars. Um, I thought he was ill or maybe injured, that's what it looked like. And did he see you or respond to you in any way? No, he didn't. Was there anybody else with him? I didn't see anyone, no. Did you make any attempt to speak to him? Yes. But he didn't reply, so I went over to see if I could help, uh, which is when he began to have a sort of convulsion. A seizure, I think. And um, what did you do then? Well, I didn't really know what to do for him, so I just thought that the best thing to do was to call for an ambulance, um, but I couldn't get a signal. So I decided to get to the nearest landline instead. Okay. Please <clears throat> need to clarify. You mentioned in your preliminary statement that you saw an unusual deterioration in Mr. Russell's condition in addition to the seizure he was experiencing. Could you tell me at what point this occurred, please? It was just after that. Uh, as I was leaving to get help, um, to get to a phone, I mean, just as I reached the elevator, I looked back at him. Okay. Could you describe again what it was you saw? <sighs> I understand that it was only a few hours after this incident that an additional two bodies were found. That would be in the early hours of the 14th? Yes, at two different locations. Both displayed evidence of the same extreme physical trauma that Mr. Russell had experienced. I should point out that the subsequent post-mortem examinations determined that each victim did belong to the same particularly rare blood group. This couldn't have been the exclusive cause of death, but as we later found out, it was certainly relevant. <laughs> There was some initial speculation that a new virulent form of rabies might have been responsible, which could have caused the accelerator metabolic collapse, but was highly unlikely to have caused the gross distortion of the skeletal structure. In any case, there was no evidence of its presence in any of the PCR tests. In fact, there was no presence of any toxins, contagion, or infectious agents at all. Proceeding to the night of the 16th, significant in, in two regards? Yes. At 8.17pm, a call was made to the emergency services from a residential address in Canary Wharf. The caller gave a brief description of her husband's symptoms before being unexpectedly cut off. Uh, when paramedics finally gained entry to the apartment, 25 minutes later, they found two bodies identified as a Mr. and Mrs. Halliday. The pathologist's report concluded that Mrs. Halliday had suffered a depressed fracture oh, and multiple C3 and C4 vertebra. In short, her husband's physical deterioration had become so uncontrollable that she had been killed as she attempted to assist him. It would seem that the Joint Committee recognised the potential threat that you advised them of and responded accordingly. Fortunately, yes. The emergency measures were in place before the next occurrence, which took place a little over 36 hours later. <laughs>